If you can't find the sunshine, be the sunshine. Um, today I'm talking to you about, well tonight, I'm talking to you about our belief changer on this week's Kahal Itiao coaching session. Her name is Sunshine Tanesco. Um, she's from Turtle Island, or other, otherwise known as um, Canada. She still lives in her territory where she's actually from, in Turtle Island. Um, she, she, she talked about making baby moccasins in her small town community and how they, in their community, they're always making things. Um, she ended up winning money from a real life TV show called The D Dragon's Den. And I, um, went to Google what the population of Canada is because Travis mentioned that there, um, there's a lot more people there. And so there's like 38 million people there. There's only 5 million in New Zealand and Aotearoa. So, um, she talked about being on this dragon scene and how it was a big deal and that not many indigenous people got to go on it. Um, through that time, she went through a whole lot of challenges during the auditions. She ended up having a baby and then, um, she ended up, oh, the baby was, um, had Down syndrome and a few other complications. So she had to make the decision on whether or not she wanted to carry on with it. She did decide to carry on. Um, she asked for $20,000. One of the judges said that she should have gone for 200k because then she would, they would have, he would have given her the funding to make a small company of that place at her, in her community. Um, she did realize that this was a very um, colonized system in the way that the Dragon's Den was set up, and she wanted, and she wanted to um, make something for herself and for Indigenous people. Um, she had quite a limited self belief back then. And so ever since then, um, her, her business ended up booming, by the way, with her um, baby moccasins. But then she wasn't able to keep up with the demand. And so she ended up going into, um, her business ended up finishing and, and went through a bit of failure. Um, she also went through, during that time, a health scare and a divorce. So, some, so she went back into working all day for someone else and then be a mum and then, and then working on her business. Um, she decided to end up setting up a powwow pitch, which was um, the idea of 60 seconds to pitch your idea and mentored for the day, and then they give their money, basically. And it was, it was all about empowering Indigenous people. So it was volunteer run. For the very first time she got, she had to go and ask for sponsors of 8,500K, or 8.5K. 8 um, to start off the first powwow pitch, <clears throat> um, it took her four years to build up to a point where she didn't have to find any more sponsors anymore. Um, she was worried about growing the powwow pitch, but um, now it is it has slowly been growing and and she now gives away twenty five thousand dollars in prizes. Um, this year they're talking about giving away fifty thousand dollars in prizes, and then in the future a hundred thousand dollars. So it's just growing, and it's mentored and supported by indigenous entrepreneurs and by indigenous entrepreneurs um she said that your journey is your journey can't go back and change things you just need to learn from the experiences and lessons and taking them forward with you on your journey um she's into storytelling teachings and and loves that kind of delivery method she keeps her eyes on the prize and tries not to deviate from her cope up of helping indigenous um entrepreneurship she talked about what a powwow was, because um, not all of us know what a powwow is or have experienced it. Um, it's kind of like a gathering of cultural expressions, to so drums, costumes, arts and crafts, and um, just get-togethers. It's like a big hoo. That would be pretty cool if we had one over here. Um, the powwow pitch has, was going to go to the five largest powwow in Canada, but then COVID hit, so they had to do to go online there was like 1600 online video applications one on and then they had one-on-one -on -one mentorship and then they got to choose and go down to the finals um you can pitch whatever you want at these powwow pitches and um there's different sections now so there's got they got like an art section and a tech section exactly uh, etc et um she also um her she's got an interesting story about fighting for clean water in her town and published a children's book about water um, it's called Night Neighbors Water Song. And, um, yeah, I've had a look at the children's book. It's real talk. And what I really liked about her was that she was very easy to listen to. It's like talking to an auntie, having a cup of tea on the table with, 
one of your aunties that's like the colourful, live, vibrant, uh, vibrant auntie. She was like that. And so I uh, recommend listening to her corridor. Um, yeah, let the sunshine shine on through whānau. Kia ora.